What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating a drink. Look at damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please oh, no. And yes, me, no. What up, 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 what's good, people? What is up? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's me, L Teddy 27, and I am back for yet another review in a Snuggie because I didn't feel like getting dressed and so forth. So I'm in my Snuggie, my Florida State University Snuggie. <laughs> for this review, y'all, because I couldn't be bothered with wardrobe at all. Since they can't be bothered on this show for real storylines, I can't be bothered with real wardrobe. So we're here for another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our review for Chasing Dallas. It is season three. It is episode two. It is entitled Tales from the Pink Parties. Let me fix this. All right, that looks a little better. The Pink Parties. So, as I fix my Snuggie, are people still wear Snuggies? I still wear my Snuggie. I love my Snuggie. It feels so good on me. My Florida State University Snuggie um, that I was gifted from, I think my child bought this for me, whatever. Um, anyway, where am I? Um, we start off with George's birthday party, okay? So... Did Mark Hale come out his mouth and say he had on, quote, dingy pink because he ain't washing his shirt? Oh, Lord. Jesus, God, help me, Lord. What in the white people don't bathe that shit is this? Oh, dear God, Lord. Oh. At any rate, they had this pink party, the pink party. And um, they discuss the Reese Markel beef over the show or whatnot. I told y'all, I do not care at this point. It's just stupid at this point. It's just so dumb. The whole argument and whole conversation is just stupid. It's dumb. It's idiotic. Who cares? Who really cares at this point? The show is out. Reese, you don't moved on. You got all kinds of things you got going on. Why do you care? Why? Why for do you care, little boy? Why? Anyway, Ariel's sitting there soaking it all in. Now, I wrote this down at the beginning of the episode when I was taking notes. And it makes so much sense that what happened at the end of the episode happened. I wrote this down at the beginning in my notes before we even got to the end. I wrote down, Ariel is sitting there soaking it all in. We all know this is her M.O. Ariel is the messy one. Ariel is the bone collector. We saw it last season over and over and over. She would carry the bones, and Mama likes to stir up the mess and get it all started. And then act like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't do nothing because she's not necessarily the party's fighting, but you started it. And because, you know, she's a lady. And we all love our um, lady. We love our women. We love our girls. And when you come off as, you know, with all of your, you know, womanliness and stuff like that, you come off with this, you know, side of innocence about you. And so we don't want to see you as being as messy as you are. But girl, you are messy, diabolical in your messiness too. Child. Remember, it really was she who started all of the mess last year between Trey Womack and Trey Howard and stuff. And Dior, she carried the bone. Remember when she told, I think she told Trey Howard that Trey Womack said that he just slapped the shit out of her. And all that. Remember, she got a whole mess. Got stirred up and started the whole fight that consumed the whole second half of season two was because of Ariel carrier bones and stuff. So please, lest we forget. Anyway, the rest of that mess, I'm not discussing. I don't care about the receipts that they have. I don't care. I told y'all after episode one, I don't care. Let it go. Anyway, moving on. Trey Howard is out here working as a stylist. I told y'all these girls are windmilling. I'm trying to become part of this goddamn thumbnail of mine. So, here you go. Trey Howard. You win. Again, you win, Trey Howard. You win. You win. I mean, because I don't know if you were channeling uh, Lion King's circle of life realness as one of the zebras of, um, you know, in there, you know, on the African plains or whatever. It's the circle of life and it moves us all <laughs> through despair and hope, through faith and love till we find our place on the path unwinding is the cir in the circle. The circle of life. God. 
anyway, the girl said she like now now Trey. Mama said, "Hey boo, I don't like these hip pants. I'm not feeling it." As my you know snuggie is coming undone, because you know it's snug. You got to you know it goes you know the opening is in a in the back for convenience. If you know what I mean. <laughs> That's why I love my snuggie. Conveniently, the opening is in the back. Anyway, um, <laughs> Trey. The girl said she liked the pants. As opposed to you having options for her to choose for pants, you said, girl, it'll be all right. I'm going to make it work. Once you sit down and get you know, it all together, it's going to be fine. Which I would have been okay with. Even the next statement you made to her would have been fine. Because the next statement you said was, it'll work out in the end. Nobody will know but us. Hey, boo. You on camera. This is being filmed. Thousands of people will be watching this. But it's just going to be between us. Now, you don't embarrass this poker. <sighs> I'm just saying. You are on camera telling us it's going to only be between us. And ain't nobody going to know these fans like this. We just watched it. She got a camera in her face. You got a camera in your face. And this is all being filmed. Girl, make it make sense. Moving on. Try our boyfriend, James, goes over to see Reese G at his house um, to go over ideas for a birthday gift. Now, this episode was a whole hour plus. This whole scene could have been taken out. Matter of fact, I wrote down that um, this whole scene explains why Reese should not be both cast member and um, EP. This was a useless scene. A very useless scene. They discuss James wanting to buy Trey, uh, his uh, get his LLC for his company. They briefly discuss George's birthday party. The shit got stupid because now you got Reese trying to flex because yes, I have to show you that I live in the condominium where I have to allow you up. And yes, I can sit here and I can shade the girls by letting them know that I purchased you Tiffany flutes for you. And it was just, it was just unnecessary shade being thrown all over the place. It was unnecessary flexing. It was unnecessary, oh, I can get this done for you. Oh, I'm the Don, the da, and the duh. And if you need these contracts, I can get that for you. And I, it's unnecessary. Real bosses work behind the scenes. They they move in um silence. They move in darkness. Uh, most times you don't even see a CEO or something like that until it's time for them to go show up and talk in front of Congress because their company has become so large and, and so profitable that the People down there to the Congress wants to know why y'all making all this money. You ain't there yet, boo. Work in the darkness and in the shadows. Your name could be out there, but we shouldn't see you on screen, boo. Even Mona Scott Young had to learn that. Didn't she stop hosting the um, reunion after a while? I'm just saying. It was just unnecessary. And it goes to prove that as much as Reese G says over and over and over, that, oh, it's neutral. We can be um, objective in what we put on there because I'm not involved with production, but you hire production, which means that production knows that I got to make my boss happy in order to, you know what I'm saying, keep a job. And so if 3CG is the boss as well as a cast member and I am production, I'm probably going to be objectively, as I put up my quotation fingers, putting scenes and editing scenes that put that person in the best light. I'm going to talk a little more about that later. But this was a wasted scene. I don't understand why it was there. I could have saved that 15 minutes and you could have cut it down to maybe 45 minutes. Whatever. We did see Raw Rod's Robert, okay? Raw Rod's Robert Ray is doing nails for his friend Derricka. It wasn't a whole lot to see here. He's single. If y'all girls trying to get in his inbox, he's single, Okay. Most of his support, he says, came from people when he was an adult and not when he was a child. Not the people who grew up, grew up with him. They're not supporting him right now. It's a lot of people who, you know, he met as an adult, which I understand because sometimes when you, um, you know, come out or whatnot as an adult, a lot of people you grew up with may not be um, okay with it. They may not, they may say outwardly that, oh, I support you or whatever. But then the actions speak differently. So I understand that. My question from this scene was, why is he still not in any scenes with the rest of the cast? Like, was he not a cast member when some of these other sh scenes were shot? Because it seems like they decided way later on to put him on a cast or something 
And so these scenes were shot. So the scenes that we see with these parties are happening in one part of the year. And the scenes that they're showing with him happen way later or something like that. Like, I don't understand, but he doesn't, he keeps saying that he's new. He don't know nobody. I'm trying to, you know, get ingratiated with the cast, but we'll never see you interacting with them. So how is that going to work out? And for a reality show, you need the cast members to have interactions with each other. I don't know. That's just, which means that, which means that it makes his scenes disjointed, like, his scenes don't fit. It doesn't. I'm like, where are you going with showing these scenes? Yeah, we need to get to know him and be introduced to him, but we also have to see him interact with the cast as well. So it's just, I don't know. Make it make sense. Ariel is out getting some fabric with her girl, um, with her friend Mulan. Now, if this is one of one of our um, sisters, trans sisters, here's my question: Mulan is your name, girl, girl. That's the name you go with, Mulan. Mei Ling ain't want none of that. <laughs> Chun Li ain't want no parts of that day. Girl, <laughs> I don't want to be the stereotypical guy. I don't want to be discriminatory. I don't want to be that guy. But you chose the day Mulan. Okay? And I'm thinking like, I'm just saying, Princess Mulan sitting on her throne of glory. Girl, anyway. <laughs> Baby, when Miss Mulan tried to, uh, Blast Ariel by saying that Ariel give her half made ass dresses. I'm like, oh, girl, you ain't have to put that woman business. Girl. She had to air. She came on this show and aired Miss Ariel out. I said that's disrespectful because y'all be asking this woman to make dresses in like 10, 20 minutes. And if you asking me to make you a dress in 10 or 20 minutes, you can't be express expecting to have stuff that takes two or three weeks to make with lining and expensive, you know, gaudy pleats and hems and all kinds of stitching and all. Girl, you asked me to have this done for you within an hour. Girl, you ain't getting no lining. Girl, get over it. Had you gotten your life in order and got me this stuff in, in enough time, you'll have all of that stuff. Because you tried to throw that out there, Miss Mulan. Like, almost like Ariel don't know how to sew right. You ain't have to put that out there. Y'all could have edited People editing, y'all could have edited that out. Ariel, if I was you, I would have told him, don't put that part in the goddamn uh, episode. Because that makes, because that makes, that's bad on her business. That makes her bit like, make it look like she not as professional as she probably is. Like, she don't know what she's doing. And you just, that, that, I think they should have let that out. Anyway, Ariel then began talking about people getting bookings, and she getting booked, and her girl Mulan getting booked, and the other girls are not getting booked. But Ariel, come here, girl. Come here. Come here, honey. Come here. Come here. Bring it on down. This is the second episode in a row. Well, I have to don my English teacher hat. And I have to teach you, like I have to teach my English language learners um, students, okay? Like my ESL, English as a Second Language students, okay? The word is not pull through. Did she say pull through of people? I swear she said, I rewound it another 5,000 times like I did last episode. I think she said pull through. The word is plethora. Plethora. Not like some of these alley people say plethora. It's plethora. P L E T H O R A. P L E T H O R A. Plethora. Say it with me. You have to pronunciate and enunciate. Plethora. Say it with me. Plethora. 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 Accent on the first syllable. Okay? First syllable gets accented. Not second, like some of the ghetto people say. Okay? Girl, you can't be trying to slick shade and read girls and drag people and you mispronouncing words because the read boomerangs back to you and you get hit with your own dragging and reads. The shade and the read come back to you as a boomerang. Girl, I'm trying. Girl, I'm trying. Anyway, we get to Trey Howard's birthday party. Now, half the room don't like Reese G. Don't get along with him. One of the parts of him. Eric keeps trying to get George and Reese G to talk and neither one of them want no parts of talking to each other. Um, I still don't understand. Now, Reese, if you know that you and George don't get along and you know you weren't invited to that good birthday party, why are you sending him a gift? Because I promise you I'm not sending you no gift and I ain't invited to your birthday party. I promise you that. Unless you had, as you would say, one of those out-of-body experiences that you claim you have where Reese, the EP, sent him <laughs> a birthday gift, not Reese, the cast member, although Reese, the cast member, is talking about sending the gift to 
Reese the EP. I mean, Reese, I mean, from Reese the cast member. I'm so confused. <laughs> that can't make sense. She was retarded. Although we're not supposed to use retarded. But that's the best word that I can use to describe what's happening here, okay? <sighs> anyway, Trey Howard gets the gift from his um dude, James, or whatever, which was the LLC. Now, here's my question. Here's my question, ladies and gentlemen. If this was a surprise and Trey Howard was not involved in the garnering of said LLC, because when you get LLCs, paperwork and stuff has to be signed, this, that, and the third. So if I'm gifting you with an LLC, that means it's probably not in your name if you didn't know about it. So technically the company, <coughs> excuse me, y'all, technically this company belongs to the boyfriend and not to Trey. Or am I wrong with that? Now, I'm not the one with the highest of business acumen. But last time I checked for businesses and legal documents and stuff like that, you got to sign your signature on there. Now, was there some forgery involved? Are they lying to us and making this this big elaborate storyline? And Trey and James really did go down together and get this LLC and they trying to make it into a storyline or whatever? I don't know. But last time I checked, if he went and got the LLC, it's in his name and not in Trey's name. Because Trey can't be a benefactor if he ain't signed at all. Y'all help me out with this. I could be wrong about this. I don't know. Y'all get in the comment section. Y'all let me know. I don't know. It was cute and all, I guess. We get to Carrie D bringing up beef that he got with Reese. So apparently, he got beef with Reese too. I don't even know where it comes from. I don't care. Something about the last reunion. I don't even remember nothing in the last reunion that Carrie D even said to even know that he had beef with Reese. But whatever. Because Carrie D really only had 35 words in all of last season. But I guess. <clears throat> Um, Ariel says, she ain't in the middle of nothing. I'm not the bone collector. I ain't nothing. See, this is how you know the production is not equitable. And this is why cast members should not be EPs. Because had this been down to the Bravos, you know what they would have did? They would have did the girls, did her like they do the girls on Bravo, where Ariel would have came out her mouth and said, I don't carry bones. I'm not the messy one. I don't go in between people. And production would have rolled it back and showed us about four or five times last season where Ariel was carrying the bone. I'm going to give y'all a pause here so y'all can remind yourselves and go back to your memory banks of those times Ariel carried the bone. Take this moment. Okay, girl. So y'all had enough time. That was y'all time to go back and, you know, play a little reel in your head or whatever. Anyway, Carrie says Markel is saying that Ariel is the bone carrier and spread mess between him and Reese. Ariel says... Listen, I don't care enough about you, you awards. I just met y'all on this show, and I don't give a shit. I don't have it to do. I'm book busy and got too much going on. Leave me the fuck alone and leave me out of it. Now, unless you get in the bad edit, Ariel, you need to talk to your friend Reese and the people editing. You be carrying bones now, as much as you say you don't care. And you may very well not care, which is why you don't care to be the bone carrier. If you don't care about these people, just like you said, it don't matter to you if you go to them and say, girl, she said this, girl, he said that, girl, he said this, girl, she said that. And it don't matter to you. But don't act like you ain't do it. Anyway, it kind of, Eric took Reese outside and it went from there and whatever. Y'all know this mama in the back? I guess she was one of um, Trey Howard's friends. She looked, she was real like, she had like the blonde hair. I was looking, I said, is that um, a young, um, um, Tisha Campbell back there. She looked real close to Tisha Campbell in the background. Um, but you know, that was the whole episode, it, it went from there. Um, I, and I know we, we beat this horse, dead horse over and over and over, but now it's cutting into the integrity of the show to me when you have a cast member that's EP, because I, I, I stopped taking it seriously because it's so skewed and so you know, not objective, but subjective. And it's just a mess. I mean, how are you going to tell me half the room got a problem with Reese, but all of the edits make Reese seem like he's the innocent party? Whatever. That's all I got. I'm not into dragging people this season. As y'all can see, I've been real good to the people this season. I've been giving real good light lights. I ain't really been dragging nobody. I'm trying to keep it peachy in these parts. We'll see how long that lasts. That's all I got for y'all. Until next time, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.